Max Sterling. Welcome to LARPGasm. Today on the show, we're going to take a look at this Nerf Double Strike, and we're going to go ahead and see about painting it up and making it Wasteland approved. Now, this particular blaster I've had laying in my basement for probably over a year. I just haven't done anything with it, um, but I decided now is the time to mess with it and sort of see what I can do. I had really wanted to get some 3D printed parts for it, but that's just not going to happen. So I'm going to see about painting it up and making it into a really cool wasteland uh, blaster for maybe some of the Fallout games I do and stuff like that. Now, this particular one, uh, I wasn't ever going to buy one of these, but I was playing around with them at the store one day and I found this one. And this one can only be described as, as I would say, a factory freak. Now, if you're into cars or maybe some other industries, the term factory freak is something that comes from the factory but is better than it is intended to be. So maybe you buy a car that's supposed to have 325 horsepower, but when you get it tested, it has 345 horsepower. You know, it's supposed to run a 12 second quarter mile, but it runs it in 11.7 for some reason. Uh, it's just, it's better than normal. You know, maybe the guys at the factory, they tighten the bolts a little tighter on that car. You know, they measure to a little bit better tolerances on it. Maybe they weren't on drugs the day they built that particular car, or maybe they were on drugs. I don't know. Something happened, you know, something extra spilled in the mix and it made it better. This, I believe, is a factory freak Nerf blaster. If you've ever heard one of these double strikes before, listen to this one. Do you hear how hard that is hitting? No other double strikes sound like that. That is hitting very hard. And uh, I wanna take a look and see just how far it goes here. We'll try to hold this just as straight as we can. So hopefully you can see where that landed. Now, my shoe size is one foot. Uh, in our system of measurement. I don't know how many uh, you know, centimeters or anything that that is, but let me go and pace it off from where I shot here and see how far it is. So I would guess that this flew about 49 feet. Now that's where it landed. Now where it bounced to is about 53 feet. So almost 50 feet out of this double strike. Now, I'm not sure how far it's supposed to go, but 50 feet seems pretty far for a tiny uh, blaster like this. Let's try the lower barrel here. Now that wasn't as good. I would say that's probably more like 25 feet. So because this blaster is already so awesome, I really hate to crack it open, so I don't think I'm going to. I think what I'm gonna do is paint it with it completely intact. And I'm gonna use a little bit different painting technique than I've done before. Normally, you sand it down, you spray paint it, you use the vinyl paint so it sticks real well. What I'm gonna do is I think, just sand it down a little bit and paint it with a water-based, just simple paint. And then I'm gonna hit with polyurethane and hopefully that seals it in and uh, gives it a weathered look. So this is the first time I've done one like this. I don't know if anyone else has. I have no idea how it will hold up, but I think the polyurethane will seal it in. And I think in the end, it'll all work out. That's a lot of thinking, but we're gonna test it out, see how it comes out. Hopefully it looks cool because this is a really good blaster and I really don't wanna fuck it up. <laughs> but let's see what we can do for it.
So now that we've got a coat of paint on here, I just want to sort of show you what we're looking like. So, painted the blaster a shiny metallic black, and we got the barrel sort of stuck in here. So, this is kind of along the lines of what we're going to be looking at. Now, I'm going to try to get this looking a little bit better through here so that that doesn't look bent and weird. But I want to sort of do an update here on this. And this is basically the halfway point. So if you're playing a modern or like a Western uh, genre of game, this may be where you want to stop. I mean, you may want to uh, put some coloring on the grip here, make it brown, wrap it in leather or something. But I mean, you could really just stop right there. And this could be your blaster for that genre. Uh, entirely up to you. Now, I'm going to go ahead and progress forward into post-apocalyptic. Anytime you're trying to make one of these things look more realistic, you want to stick with just one or two colors. Like on this one, I have two colors going on, but if you've ever seen, you know, what a real-life equivalent is, they're not colorful. They're usually one color, maybe two colors. So when I see a lot of blasters that are painted and they have like four or five different color schemes going on, it's like, yeah, that looks cool. You know, and it gives it almost more like a Borderlands type of look. But like, if you're trying to keep it real, I mean, you should stick to just one or two colors and they should be very boring shades. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. I mean, I would say this is probably even too much. But since I'm going into sort of that fantasy, post-apocalyptic genre with it, you know, I wanted to keep it somewhat real, but also, you know, I wasn't real concerned with making it look perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna move this into the post-apocalyptic era and uh, really do some additional work to it here. And one other way that you can distress and really sort of genre uh, one of these blasters is to just take the paint and just squeeze it in your hand and just rub the blaster down. But you need to decide how far into the apocalypse are you and what kind of apocalypse is it. If you haven't seen my video on that, you're going to want to check it out. 
But if you're just some dirty, greasy mutant that found this thing laying, you know, out in a field or something, it's going to look a lot different than if you're some sort of mercenary working for a faction shortly after the fall, or if you're somewhere in the middle. Uh, you know, it really is going to vary. So you have to figure out what your character story is and base the blaster off of that. We're going to go a little bit further into time. We're going to make this thing a little bit more dirty than maybe it would usually be. And we're just going to use paints and stuff. We're not going to get into actual dirt uh, on this particular blaster. So we're going to keep it, you know, relatively clean. But, you know, Fuller's Earth, you know, just <laughs> putting uh, some spray glue on it and shoveling sand or dirt onto it would work great. It all depends on what area you're playing in as well because if you're making one of these blasters, if you're playing in a desert setting, it's going to look a lot different than if you're playing in a wood setting or an urban setting. So let's go ahead and do this. You're going to want to use a fair mix of colors. So we're going to do some browns here. So that's a light brown. Maybe some burnt umber or like a chocolate. If you're someplace where they have red clay or something like that, you're gonna want to get some red. So now that the blaster's had time to dry, it's looking pretty good. I can see there's a couple places I'm going to want to touch up with some paint because the brighter paint has shown through. But other than that, I think it's looking pretty good. I had used these plastic zip ties to hold down this burlap tape that I used. However, I think that they're not exactly you know, in flow with the overall blaster because I got metal up here. And if I'd use zip ties up here, I think it would have worked. But I don't want to get you know too many different textures on here so I'm going to go ahead and pull these off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to coat them in Mod Podge or uh, maybe where you're from you call it Mod Podge but that's not actually what it is it's Mod Podge so if that just gave you some Mandela effect uh, I'm sorry for that but it's actually Mod Podge. It was never Mod Podge I'm aware. And here's our final result. Now this started its life as a Nerf Zombie Strike Double Strike Blaster. And now it is a post-apocalyptic wonder. If you take a close look, you can see the burlap work that we did. And then there's a lot of subtlety in it with the rub and buff. It's probably hard to appreciate on camera because if you look at it in person, you can get a sense of the detail, but I think you probably get the idea. And of course, obviously, it does still work. I actually went outside and did a few range tests with it, and unfortunately, because of the barrel, we lost some distance. This was shooting average around 55 feet uh, before now it shoots about 32 to 33 pretty consistently so we lost a little bit over 20 feet by adding this barrel on here and also by me pulling it apart like i said when i first got this blaster i really felt as though it was something special and i think opening it up to do some painting and stuff really screwed with that now if you mod this internally with uh, the limited mod you can do on this i mean you may be able to regain that uh, if you don't open it up in the first place, you would probably never lose it. But anytime you add these long barrels like this, you lose a little bit because the uh, darts will sort of 
bounce into this. And the other thing is too, a lot of times when they exit, they don't always fly straight. So we lost a little bit, but this was meant to be more of like a showpiece. You know, this is something you would carry in a holster right here. You know, maybe at your side, but I would think right here. And then you could just pull it out. And that long barrel, you know, it's just intimidating. You don't know what's coming out the other end. And uh, of course, <clears throat> For those of you that live in places where you have to have them, you can always add that on the end because you know, that really just takes immersion to the next level. Nothing says I'm immersed like an orange tip on your blaster. But um, this is just one that I salvaged off of another blaster somewhere, but it would fit perfectly on the end of this pipe if I was choosing to glue it on there. Luckily, I don't live someplace where I need that, so I'm not going to. Um, but sometimes your game rules do require it. So if your game does require it, I mean, you're gonna have to add that on there. So that's up to you. But super easy to do. You can also always just take a little piece of tape or orange paint and paint the tip of that as well. And that should get you by. But overall, I'm very happy with how this came out. I uh, would change a few things if I was to do it again. I would not make the barrel quite as long, but I wanted it to be really sort of over the top and, and this is for this size of a blaster um, I probably would have made uh, you know a little bit shorter that way it wouldn't have impacted the flight of the darts so much but um you can sort of see how it progressed from you know start to finish and really you could stop anywhere along that progression line I mean you don't have to go this far with it I wanted it to look like it's further into the future and this has really been around so now it's all uniform color you could have stopped previously, like I said, where it would have maybe been like a modern or a Western style. You could have stopped whenever we had the really sort of bright highlights, so it looked more like a borderland style. It's up to you and it's up to the game you're playing. This, I wanted to be really grungy. I wanted it to look like something that could have come right out of Mad Max or something, but without all the goofy uh, tchotchkes and baubles and stuff all over, because for one, there's no place really to hang them on here. And um, it's not something that I think you would want to add on to you know a blaster I mean, if this is something that you are looking to uh, go to to save your life why would you want to adorn with all kinds of crap that's going to get in the way now i mean if you're in a group or something and you wanted to put a stencil on this and spray paint like an insignia or something i mean that's cool but all the other crap that sometimes are on people's post-apocalyptic gear you know this is one tool i don't think you'd want to mess with so i didn't add anything at least to this particular one so hopefully you enjoyed this build uh, if you did please like subscribe and share and let everybody that you know know that I'm here making these videos and um, making these awesome projects and I really hope that uh, you enjoy the things that I'm doing so that you can try them on your own and hopefully maybe improve some of the stuff that you have or at least get an idea of uh, some techniques that people use you may already be beyond where I am and that's fine but you know what it never hurts to just see how other people do the work because maybe you know they have a good tip that you can pick up on and uh, of course as always adventure on